snow through the pillars of the pale. Rest your feet, come and listen to the. All right, we're going to get started, uh, and let me just switch my screen. Here is what we're going to build today. We're going to use a source Amazon machine image. Uh, in this case, our, our simple Minecraft server that we're running in this in our uh, dev development account. We're going to create a pipeline in Image Builder to launch a new EC2 instance based on that AMI. We're going to use a built-in Amazon component, basically to uh, update the operating system. And from that, that pipeline will create a new updated AMI. And once that AMI has been created, we're going to copy it to a secondary region. So that's what we're going to walk through. Okay. You can see in my management console, already set up, let me get rid of this AMI that we don't need. This is the AMI we're going to use as our test case today. The very first thing that we need to do is extend some of the functionality that already exists. So we're going to leverage uh, a VPC that we've already got in the environment, and we're going to uh, leverage some existing IAM roles. But I want to expand on the roles that, are, that exist in our account at this point, because we need to allow the image builder service to basically execute commands on our behalf. All right. So I'm going to set up a really simple IAM template here. Okay, so that's what we're going to build. We'll come back to parameters in a second and we'll build out our, our resources section. The first thing that we're going to create here is the actual role itself. So I'm going to call this builder role zero and set up its type as an IAM role. And then we'll have to define the, the properties, the attributes that we want for this. Okay. So this is going to be a, a really simple doc. Oops, there we go, document. And we'll just add. simple statement. And we want to let the EC2 service assume this role. Okay, and I've got these copied already. We're going to actually use two Amazon provided roles, or sorry, uh, policies. We'll come back to what those are here in a second. And then we'll get to tags. And I've got this copied in another file here, so let me just grab that. If you watched, uh, last week we did a walkthrough of building out prefix lists. So you would have, this would have looked familiar. It's a standard set of tags that we use. So now that we've got those defined here, let's go up here and set up some default values for these. environment so we're gonna say type string we'll just put those two in to, to show fix the spelling so that's essentially our role and all we're doing here is we're letting the EC2 service assume this role right so this is essentially our trust policy and then what we're assigning to this role are two AWS provided uh, managed policies. So this is uh, the built-in policy that's going to be used by the image builder. And the image builder under the hood, what, what it's doing is abstracting away some of the complexity that uh, exists within creating automation documents in the systems manager solution. So we need also to allow uh, the systems manager 
integration here or service integration with a role. So that's essentially what we've done. Uh, we also need now a way to associate this role to an instance and that is through an instance profile. So I'm just going to call this builder profile zero. Okay, and that's I am uh, instance profile. Okay, and I always forget this. We're going to say depends on and we're going to say that depends on the, the builder role. And all we're doing here is we're just controlling the order in which the CloudFormation service deploys these two resources. So this means deploy the role before you set up the instance profile. And all we need to do here now is associate this role. So we're just going to refer to the role that we created. Okay. And that is really all we need to do in IAM. We're going to set up a couple outputs here, and we'll use these as inputs in our uh, other templates that we're going to create. So the first is just our instance profile. In this case, we can just refer to builder profile that we created earlier, and then assign a name uh, to the builder or to this export. Sorry. So we're going to use a, a pseudo function here. All right, grab the name of the stack and we'll just call it profile. So at this point, what we've done is we've created or we're in the process of creating some IAM roles that we need. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to do this step by step. Uh, it's a good way to simply you know, do a simple test on our uh, templates as we build them, uh, just so that we don't end up with a whole bunch of troubleshooting. So if we go back to the browser here, and we'll change to CloudFormation. And we'll create a new stack. Okay, and we're gonna upload the template that we just created. Sorry, I just have to find the page here, here we go. Right. And I'm just going to call this builder I am. And you can see the parameters are set to their default values here. And we put allowed values in the environment so we could change it. You know, basically it gives us a drop down list. We'll leave it as development. Click next. Let's tag this again just to you know practice good tagging. And we'll just we'll just set it up the same that we did before. Or in the template, I guess, right? And we'll say environment is development. So we're just ta adding the tags now to the, the stack itself. We won't go get into stack policies or anything. We'll just click next, get our uh, basically summary slide here, and then we'll say yes, we're gonna we're okay that it's gonna interact with resources or with the IAM service and create some resources there. So we'll say create, and uh, let's see what happens. Unknown field, um, spelling error. Unknown field, okay, either spelling, that looks, the spelling looks okay. Let me go back, have a look at what we did wrong here. Oh, see what I did? It's a tab. So it's thinking that uh, managed policy ARNs is a, par a part of our assume role doc, which we know it isn't. So we'll just remove one tab there and we'll go back and try it again. Back to the browser. And we'll have to delete this stack. Just give it a second to clean up. All right, try it again. Set environment. Okay, the rest of this will all stay the same. We'll click next and then scroll all the way to the bottom. Acknowledge the fact that we're creating resources in IAM. Let's see if, if we figured that tab issue out this time. All right, 
it's still not like in our policy here, so let's have a look. Ah, I'm having some spelling issues today. I said assume a rule, not assume role. So let's fix that. I think I mentioned last week when we were walking through the, the, uh, I keep forgetting what we did last week already. It was prefix lists. We would normally do this with uh, some command line tools like uh, AWS CloudFormation Validate Template, which actually would have caught this for sure. It most likely would have caught this air too with the spacing uh, thing, the spacing issue. But for these demos, I like to do it through the console. So let's go back again to the browser. And we'll do the same thing. Just clean this stack up and we'll give it another shot. It's also nice when you when you build this into your CI, uh, you don't have to do this every time you're you're trying to kind of get that first the first time that uh, you deploy a template, you often end up in this kind of troubleshooting situation. Streams it streamlines this process a bit. All right, there we go. Next, scroll to the bottom and say, acknowledge your IAM again. Let's see if the third time's the charm here. Well, it hasn't failed immediately like it did the last couple times. There we go. So our role is done. Oh man, unsupported property role. I think it's supposed to be roles, like plural. Need, needed more caffeine today, I think. So let's go back to PyCharm. And yeah, right here, roles, plural. Okay. I was joking with somebody the other day that, you know, I, I really believe that in the end, to be successful in uh, IT, it's nothing more than a, a pure battle of wills. Who can who can who has the intestinal fortitude to just keep trying something until it works? So let's let's keep soldiering on here. So builder, I am all that stays the same. I'm gonna leave this. I think you get the idea now. I just don't want to type it again. And acknowledge and create. Honestly, didn't think setting up the uh, the IAM piece would be the challenging part here. <coughs> I think we're good this time. I think it would have failed by now. So let me open up another window. We're gonna go over to IAM in anticipation that we, we got it on the fourth time. And let's still think about it. And we're gonna to go to roles and uh, we'll just build her. This is the built-in uh, role. So this is the service role that gets created uh, the first time you deploy something. But we're, we're creating something specific here for the EC2 instance. And you can see there's our SSM policy. And this is the new policy. You'll actually see two of these in the account. One is being deprecated. I wanna say it's like ECS, or sorry, not ECS, EC2 SSM policy, I think it is. I can't quite remember. If you select it though, you'll actually see right at the top, it'll say this role is being deprecated, use this managed instance core instead. And if we expand this out, you'll see what it does, right? It's basically providing this EC2 instance with access to a, a bunch of operations in S3, uh, and then, or it's not S3, sorry, SSM, and then uh, the SSM messages services, the EC2 message service, and then if we continue down, we'll see here, whoops, try to scroll there. Basically image builder getting access, KMS encryption, okay, getting an object from an S3 bucket. We're not gonna do the, the S3 integration today, 
but uh, what you can do is when we get to the components section, we're going to use an AWS managed component, but you could create your own component. You could put that component code in line in your CloudFormation template. I don't know if that necessarily, I wouldn't do it that way. I would put it into an S3 bucket and then use the S3 URI and point to the, the source. So in order to do that, you need this uh, uh, S3 get object command. You can see here that it's looking for a specific bucket. I would change this. I'd create our own managed policy. I'd change it and allow get object from whatever we called our S3 bucket where the components are. Okay, so that's our role. And let's just make sure now that this actually finished. It didn't roll back on us. Okay, so there we go. We've got our IAM role and we created the EC2 instance profile so we can associate that role to the EC2 instance that will be uh, created on our behalf as part of the image pipeline. Okay, so that's step one complete. The other thing that you need to think about are some of the infrastructure components. Uh, I, I mentioned as we got started that we're going to use an existing VPC in this account, the VPC that has our Minecraft server in it just because it's easy and we're not gonna, we don't have to create something from scratch. So if you don't have that, uh, I'm not a big fan of using the, the default VPC, so we would normally create, quite often we just call it a tools VPC, so we'd create a standalone VPC and uh, use that tools VPC as a temporary staging ground for things like, well, image builder in this case, and, and maybe other services or other automations that you're working on through systems manager or maybe some other solution. Basically where we need ephemeral uh, instances, right? An instance comes to life to do something and then we rip it down. We tend to use that tools VPC to do that. The other thing that we need is a security group, right? Every EC2 instance uh, needs a security group. What we're going to do is we're going to create a, a really simple security group. It's going to allow all outbound connections and allow no inbound connections. And remember, a security group is stateful, which means any of the connections originating from the EC2 instance, when the communication comes back, it's allowed. But we're not going to allow any um, outside initiated connections to come into the EC2 instance that will be used. Okay. And actually, this, this got us the first time we we tried the image builder when we, we set all this kind of stuff up. We actually let it hit, I think the default the default security group is what it uses in the default VPC if you make none of these changes that we're doing. And remember that the default security group, even in a, in a custom built VPC, allows communication to resources in, the, in that default security group only, which actually will fail because that EC2 instance needs to go and talk to other services. So that's another little gotcha that you might run into. So let's show you how we dealt with that when we were building this out. Okay. So again, we're just going to say deploy a security group for the image builder service. And we will need parameters again. So I'm going to steal the parameters from here. We're going to add a few more parameters to this as we build this out, but that'll get us started. And now we need our security group. So I'm just going to call this builder SG. It's uh, AWS EC2 security group and then properties. Some of the options or some of the attributes I'm setting in here aren't really required, but uh, I like to add them because I think it makes a more complete document that you can use well for documentation purposes after the fact. And also, if, if, you know, I, I don't know about, about you, but even in a short period of time, if, if I'm off doing something else and then I come back to this template, if I've made it very, very sparse, like just enough to make it work, I often find myself kind of trying to remember exactly what the intent was. So very much like comments in, in a simple script or an application, uh, adding some additional attributes here might just make it easier to manage later on. Okay, so we're going to start with a group description and we'll just say uh, security group. Okay. And now what we need to do is add tags. <laughs> That's it. Okay. Because remember that I'm going to take these out of our IAM template. Grab these ones here. And drop those there. Okay. Whoops. Grab the, the whole thing. A couple things here is remember that a security group by default allows all traffic outbound and no traffic inbound. 
So we can create here essentially uh, an empty security group, right? It has, it has no inbound rules. It just has a single outbound rule and that's it. That's all we need. The other thing that's missing here is associating this security group with a VPC. If we were, if we were to leave this as it is right now, it would actually uh, associate with the default VPC, which is going to cause problems later on. So I'm just going to make this really simple and say VPC ID, and we'll add a parameter up here. And we're going to use uh, a built-in, an Amazon-provided parameter type here. And I'm going to have to look it up. So let me just get over to the CloudFormation documentation. We're actually looking for uh, an Amazon provided parameter type. Let me just get to the right page here. Here we go. So I have a little cheat sheet today that I'm working off of as I'm building out this code just to try to streamline the process a little bit. But if we're building something from scratch, I often spend the majority of the time in the CloudFormation document looking at, you know, for the different resources that I'm deploying, what are the required attributes versus the, uh, the, the um, what are the optional parameters, right, or optional attributes that we can set. And here's another good example is I know what I want for a parameter, but I, I won't be able to remember this string. So what we're going to do is we're going to look for an AWS specific parameter type, and we're going to find VPCs. Okay, so what this will do is when we run this, it'll actually give us a dropdown of the VPCs that are available in the region where we're deploying, uh, in this case, our security group template. Okay. If we were running this through a CI script, we would pass a parameter value in instead. And in the CI script itself, we may actually just put a variable in that says it's VPC123. But in this case, because we're doing it through the management console, if I didn't use this, if I just said string, if I could spell it, then I would expect you to type in the unique identifier for that VPC. And the chances of making a mistake there, yeah, yeah, you might run into some problems. So instead, we're gonna do this. So we get the drop down list and we just select. And the last thing we're gonna add here, sorry, my mic's all messed up today. There we go. The last thing we're gonna add here, just like we did in our IAM template are some outputs. So we're just gonna say builder SG zero, uh, set its value to builder SG zero, and then give it an export name again. So we'll do the same thing that we did in the previous template. We'll use an intrinsic function sub, and then the stack name, whatever we call this, and we'll just call, the, call this builder again. So now we've got our IAM role created and an instance profile that allows us to associate that role to an EC2 instance. Now what we're going to do is deploy the security group because the security group will be used as part of the image pipeline in order to actually, when we stand it up, something called the infrastructure configuration, uh, the VPC we want to use, the security group that we want to use, all that good stuff. Um, we need that security group to find. So let's deploy this now. Go back over to the browser. Oh, sorry, I didn't, oh, I messed that up. You didn't see what I typed. Didn't realize that I had, hadn't changed screen. So what I did was right here, I added that parameter type. And this is what I was mentioning about the Amazon uh, specific parameter type. So we're gonna get a drop down list of the VPCs. And then all I, the other thing that I did was just add the output. Okay, sorry about that. So now I wanna go here. And we'll go back to our CloudFormation console, and we're going to create a new stack. All right, we've got a we got an error here, another error. At least one resource member must be defined. I think I probably have a spacing issue again. Ah, uh, yeah. Let's see what I did. <laughs> Singular versus plural. I, I'm having that problem tonight. There we go. Parameters resources, outputs. All right, let's try this again. Hey, 
and we'll just call this builder SG and you can see here's our drop down okay so if I didn't have that uh, SSM or sorry AWS parameter type I would have to type this in right chances of, of not chances of doing that successfully are probably low at least uh, especially with my typing skills tonight so I've already mentioned we're gonna use the Minecraft VPC that we have running here so there we go and we'll say next I'm not going to do this, but you get the idea, owner, owner email, and environment again. Scroll to the bottom, get our summary page, and we're going to say create stack. And there we go. Okay. Instance profile and role ready to go. Security group ready to go. So sort of the basic prerequisites to actually create our, our uh, image builder pipeline are done. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually look at the image builder itself. Um, I'm going to find the page that I want to walk through because there are a lot of options here. Let me just quickly. Find this document page, documentation page. So if you scroll down the left hand side here, you can see the different pieces of this pipeline that we're going to work on. We're going to do our infrastructure configuration, we're going to create a recipe, we're going to create a pipeline, and then we're going to do uh, a distribution configuration. So moving this AMI that we've created to another region. So let's work on that. Create a new uh, a new file. We'll call it builder, and we'll give it a description. Uh, okay. We'll just steal from our parameters again out of our IAM profile. We'll add to these as we need them, but I would just like to start with with that. And then resources plural is where we're gonna go. Okay. So the first thing that we wanna create here is the infrastructure configuration. And this is where we're gonna define all of the components of uh, the infrastructure. The types of instances, this is where we assign the profile name, uh, security groups get assigned here, subnets that we wanna use, all of that gets defined right in this section. Okay, so we'll call it infra zero. And it's, it's, it's long, image builder infrastructure configuration. There we go. So if we go back and have a look at the documentation page for this, I lost my browser, there we go. We're doing the infrastructure config. And if you look, it defines all the properties. Some of these properties are optional, some of them are required. And the easiest way to tell is simply to scroll down and go through, right? You don't need a description, you do need an instance profile name. So we're gonna build these out. Okay. We are gonna give it a description for the reasons that I mentioned before, right? But, uh, you, you know, you go back in a couple weeks and you try to remember what it was that you did uh, a few weeks in the past. Sometimes it's hard. So we're going to say, uh, we'll, we'll just call this EC2, actually image builder infrastructure config for Minecraft, right? And looking at the next option, sorry, PyCharm, there we go. Right? The next option is our instance profile name and this is required. And we're gonna to refer to the output that we had uh, from the template that we've deployed already, the IAM template. And I always have to cut and paste this because I cannot, for whatever reason, keep it in my brain. What we're using here is an intrinsic function called import value, and this is referring to the name of the export that we created for the profile, the EC2 instance profile that we created earlier on. So what we need to do is we need to set a value for IAM stack. 
if we don't put this in, it's gonna throw an error at us. And I don't remember what we called the IAM stack. I think it was just builder IAM. So we'll set this as a default. This way we don't have to type it in, okay? So that's the first thing. This is going to essentially say, use the instance profile that you exported from the IAM template, and that IAM template's called builder IAM. I think I called it profile, but let's just check. We'll open up this, scroll to the bottom. This name matches, okay? So we should be good there. So that's the first step. Uh, the next is defining the instance types that we want to use for this. We're just going to put one in here. We're going to say use a T3 medium, but you could put in, you know, something like this, uh, X large, things like that. Okay. We're just going to define a single template for now or a single instance type. That should do the trick. Uh, key pairs. So, uh, we're going to put key pair in here, but I don't know if I would do this in like in a, in a real pipeline. And I'll tell you why, because we're going to see a, 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 an attribute that we're going to define here a little later on that's going to terminate this instance regardless of the outcome. So actually, let's, let's do it this way. We're not going to put the key pair in. Now, because we don't have a key pair, remember that we can't do any troubleshooting on the EC2 instance itself, uh, even if we don't terminate it on a failure because we won't actually be able to uh, get to that machine using a key pair. However, we could use the systems manager to do that, or we could also output logs to CloudWatch logs or S3 and be able to use that log information to kind of troubleshoot why the pipeline failed and go from there. All right, so that's required or not required. The logging configuration is where we can confine or define the the actual S3 configs and things like that. We're not going to worry about that for today. We are going to give it a name because that's required. And we'll go back to the handy intrinsic function and sudo of, we'll say Minecraft. Right again. Not super important for today. We need the security group IDs and we're going to go back and use this as again and we can assign multiple security groups to the CC2 instance but in, in this case we've got that basic one that we created so we're going to do the same thing that we did for the IAM stack SG stack it's a string and we'll set a default value of builder SG and I'm going to have to change this I think we just called it builder but let's check builder so we're good there. Scrolling through the other options in the documentation, uh, you can you can configure simple notification alerts coming out of this. We're not gonna do that today. And then we also have to decide the subnet ID. Where do we want this EC2 instance to be created as part of our pipeline? We're gonna go back to our import value again. And in this case, we're gonna say VPC stack and I know from how we do these all the time that our private subnets, we've, we've exported those as private subnet zero and private subnet one. So I'm gonna do that. Okay. And just like we've done for both IAM stack and our SG stack, we'll do this. And I wanna, I wanna say this is Minecraft VPC. We'll double check and we can always override it if we need to in the deployment itself, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. And then terminate instance on failure. We're going to set this to true. This might be something that you would want to make false the first time you executed this. Uh, if it times out or something like that and you want to go and do some troubleshooting. Otherwise, regardless of the outcome of this pipeline that we're going to create, it's going to terminate that instance on us. Okay, So it's going to terminate it on failure and, and if it succeeds, it's part of the the, the, the finishing touch to, to rip that EC2 instance down. Okay. So we're gonna say, yes, do the termination, and we'll steal again from our IAM, and we'll grab the tags. And fix our bad spacing. Maybe, there we go. All right. So now we've got our infrastructure configuration. That's the first part. 
of the deployment or of the uh, image builder pipeline. The next thing we're going to create is our image recipe. Okay, so let's do this. We'll say recipe zero. And it's just image recipe. And let me just find the documentation page again. So this is where we're actually going to provide some information to the EC2 instance. We can add block devices, so uh, additional EBS volumes, things like that. And this is where we're going to uh, configure our components. What do we want to have executed on this image? Okay. So let's walk through the, the process of creating this. We're not going to worry about adding block devices or anything like that. So we're going to start with components. And this is what I was mentioning earlier on. You can create your own components or you can use components that are created uh, and, and provided to us in the Image Builder service from Amazon. So let's go over and have a look at what we have for options. Let me just open up a tab here. Get into the Image Builder service and let me just change my screen. Okay. So we're building a recipe right now and we're gonna leverage a component. And you can see we've got components that are made by us and components that are uh, either shared with us or provided to us by Amazon. So we're going to look at these components. And you can see there's lots of different things that are available here. It's a little bigger. And I'm going to say we're dealing with a Linux machine, so we'll at least do, do some filtering. And I want to look just for the really basic patch operating system. So we'll scroll through this and see if we can find it. I don't even remember exactly what it's called, so unfortunately I can't search for it either. It's probably like right on the last page. <laughs> Hey, there we go. Update Linux, right? Updates Linux with the latest security patches. That we're, that's all we're gonna do today, pretty simple. What we need from this for CloudFormation is the ARN. So let me copy this, but before we go back to the editor, you can have a look. And, and I mentioned earlier on that really Image Builder is just an abstraction of automation documents that uh, exist in the Systems Manager solution. So you can do all of what we're gonna do today in Systems Manager, but the Image Builder provides us with some additional uh, features, right? Like built-in copying of AMIs across regions and things like that. You can do that in SSM, but you'd have to create it mostly all from scratch. So you can see we've just got a simple YAML doc and this describes what you, what you want it to do. And uh, you could create these yourself and then, as I mentioned, store them in S3 and refer to them. Okay. And we've got a, a, only a simple build step here. There's builds and test components and you can get all really fancy here. But we're going to grab this and we're going to go back to PyCharm. And that's what we need to put in right here. This is the component that we want as part of our recipe. Okay. So that's the first part. We are, oh, I messed that up. Okay. So let me just show you this. Here's a, a, a little tip when you're building CloudFormation templates. See this right here? Components dash component configuration. If you're unsure of what this is, if you just click it, it'll take you to the next page. And see what I need? I need component ARN in front of that ARN that we just created. So let's, let's add that. Component ARN. There we go. That should work now. Okay. Otherwise, it would have thrown an error at us when we tried to execute this. So there's uh, the first couple steps. We're going to add a description. We'll go back to our favorite intrinsic function. And we'll just, we'll kind of structure this the same way. Minecraft recipe, right? Having a look at the doc, what else do we need here? Description we have, uh, name. Actually, I'm going to switch this up. This is actually a better name. In here, we might say something like 
maintain OS of the Minecraft server, right? Did I do the same thing up here? Yeah, I did a better job up here. Let's put some quotes around that. I don't think it'll matter, but you never quite know. So we've got our description, our name, and now we need to define the parent image. So this is the AMI that we want to use uh, for this pipeline. And I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna refer to Minecraft AMI. And we'll continue to build out our parameters up here. Did I do lowercase? I didn't. I like lowercase. We're gonna do this. And uh, we're gonna set a, actually, we're gonna leave this just to demonstrate. So we won't put a default value there, but I do have to change this, right? Okay, so that's our parent image. That's the starting point for our pipeline. Uh, then we have tags. You know, the tag structure in this case is a little different, I think, for recipes. So we're gonna take the easy way out. I, I wanna say it's, it's just, key value with a colon between, but I can't quite remember, so we're gonna leave that off. And then you do have to define a version. So we'll just say version one. Okay, so that's our, our recipe configuration at this point. Okay. If we go back and have a look at the documentation, okay, we've got our image recipe, we've got our image uh, configuration, and now we want to look at uh, the distribution. The distribution is right here, and this is how we provide instructions to Image Builder to tell it what we want to do with the new AMI, the output AMI you see here. Okay. And the main function here is providing authorization for what can launch EC2 instances off of this, so launch permissions, and also copying that uh, that AMI off to another region. Okay. So let's build that. distribution zero and this is another long name let's get this defined here so just like we've done before All right, so this might be really handy in a, in a DR situation so you can have a schedule to maintain your AMIs, let's say once a week or something like that. And you could then, once that AMI is created, you could copy it to another region in the event that something were to happen in your primary region, you could recover that EC2 instance in the secondary region. Okay, so interesting there. I'm gonna give it a name. Not AWS region. Man. Okay, there we go. And what did we do with the other? Okay, we'll do Minecraft distribution. Now, when we first tested this out, this is where we ran into some problems. Uh, not problems, but I, I, I don't know if the, the documentation when we first read through this was super clear. So what you have to do now is define the distributions. What do you want to do with this output AMI? And if you're doing this through the management console, it automatically configures the distribution information for the source region. In our case, uh, the Canadian region, right? CA Central 1. If you're doing this in CloudFormation, like we're doing though, you have to do that configuration yourself. So this is what messed us up the very first time we tried this because we had deployed it through the console and it did this part automatically. So when we looked at the documentation, we kind of just, we just overlooked it. So our source region is central one. And now what we have to do is do the actual distribution config. And you have to give it a name again. call this um, and image builder also has a couple built-in variables 
and just like systems manager you you use the double curly brackets so we're going to say image builder and it's just build date okay so that's the name for this distribution to config and just like we've seen before right create a description and we're just going to call this minecraft 1161 so that's that's the distribution configuration for the source region, in our case, CA Central. Then we have to do the same for any other regions we want to configure. In our case, we're going to use US East 1 as our secondary region, and you've got to do the same thing. Okay, we're going to do this. And we're going to actually change this. We're going to, we're going to try something additional here, and we're going to go, we're going to use another pseudo parameter and we are gonna put region in here. I, I always forget this structure. I wanna say this is right, but it'll let us know if it's not. So instead of hard coding something, we can use that pseudo parameter just to make our template a little more flexible. Right. Name, description, I wanna just make sure that we don't have anything else. Oh yeah, we need launch permissions. So a long permission config configuration there we go and we have to determine which accounts are allowed to use this AMI as a source for EC2 instances and all we're gonna do is we're gonna keep it just to our account okay, so another pseudo parameter here allows us to say uh, this EC2 instance in US East 1 is uh, available to these user IDs, which are representations, the 12 digit IDs of your accounts. That's it. Okay. And we're also gonna add some tags here. And I'm gonna just cut and paste these from my cheater script over here because I don't wanna type all these in. Okay. Once we get this working, I'll, I'll come back and, and tell you why I think this is important. So that's, I think, our distribution config. Distribu uh, description, our name, and then you know the meat of this is really the actual configuration of what you want to do with the output AMI. I think we've got everything there. The last piece is to tie all of these components together. All right. Now, as I'm looking at this, let me just make sure. Yeah, none of these are referring to each other, so I'm not too worried about depends on situations. And let me pull up the image pipeline. And this is just image pipeline. All right, so there's, there's again, a fair number of things we have to do here. So we'll set up a description and we'll just say manage the, right? We do have to give this a name, so we'll follow the same structure that we've done throughout this. Okay, pretty basic there. And now we have to provide it with the additional attributes. So let me just see what we gotta deal with here. So here's our first reference. We're gonna refer to the recipe that we created earlier on. And it's asking us, you can see here, specifically for an ARN. So in most cases, when you do a, you would always want to look in the documentation, but it's a general, you can usually get away with this. If you do a, a reference to a logical, a, a logical uh, component within a template, it usually re replies with the name. Not always, but generally. If you need the ARN, then you would normally use get attribute. So we can go like this. And we still go back and we say recipe zero but we want the ARN attribute. So that'll take care of that. That'll pull the ARN in from that other component. And this is where now I wanna do this. I wanna make sure that these other components are deployed before the pipeline because the pipeline requires some of those other pieces to be in place first. So this is just a way to, to again, control what um, the order in which things are deployed, right? Now we need our infrastructure configuration and again I think it's just like this so we're gonna do the same thing Oops. 
Grab the logical ID for that. Dot R. And we got the name already, we got our description, and now you define a schedule. Okay, and I wanna just check the doc for this schedule. Yeah, schedule isn't even required, but I'm gonna demonstrate this because when we build this out, we would always say, you know, Saturday mornings or Sunday mornings, we're gonna go through the fleet of AMIs that a customer may have on their account and run recipes, basically components, right? Against those EC2 instances to patch them, to do whatever we need to do. We're doing, again, something really simple, just patching the operating system, but you can actually run multiple components against those instances, uh, whether they're build components or test components, uh, in order to automate the, the process of maintaining those, those machines. Okay, so we need pipeline execution. Now, this is, a, this is an interesting one. Let's, let's have a look at what this means. So if you look in the image pipeline documentation and you go under schedule, you've got our schedule definition and you can see here pipeline execution start condition is a string value and it can have uh, a couple different options, right? You can see here expression match and dependency updates available or expression match only. So what's the difference? If you use expression match and dependency, it will only build a new image when there's known changes pending. Okay. If we use expression match only, it's gonna build an image every single time the expression, the schedule expression that we're gonna create here in a minute uh, fires. So you'd have to kind of figure out what you wanna do, but we're gonna force it to execute every Saturday morning um, and patch our, our, our Minecraft machine. Okay. So that's, that's what this means. You've got two options there. And now we have our actual, you can see here, the schedule expression. So let me go back to the doc or to the editor and we'll go schedule expression. And this is basically a cron expression or a cron-like expression. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna cut and paste this because I always mess these up. So basically, every Saturday at midnight, execute this. And then we can mark this pipeline as enabled or disabled, uh, and we want it to be enabled. Okay. Now, here, we've got this other reference. So we're gonna say, depends on infra, did I just call it infra zero? Yeah, infra zero. All right, so there we go. I think we've got everything that we need. Oh, I missed one. Yeah, back here. Distribution configuration ARN. And we'll do the same thing that we did before. All right, and add this here. So you can see when we run this, assuming everything executes properly, the recipe, the infrastructure configuration, the distribution configuration, all three of those uh, resources could be deployed in parallel, right? Because they don't rely on each other. And then by using this depends on attribute, we're, we're basically telling CloudFormation only deploy the image pipeline once the recipe, the infrastructure, and the distribution configure are all done. Okay. Because we've got multiple references and I did that reference wrong. There we go. Okay. So I, I think we're ready to go. Let's get rid of this space. Okay. And I'll flip back to the browser. We'll go back to CloudFormation. And now we're going to execute. So create a stack. This will tell us right away if we have any basic syntax errors. We'll get that red bar across the top and we do. Okay. So what do we got? Variable names in blah, 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 must contain alphanumeric characters only. Ooh, this is gonna be an interesting one to, uh, to figure out. So let's go back here. And what I'm simply gonna do is I'm gonna search for sub, right? Cause yeah, it said fn sub. So we know that we've used the sub command like this.
Huh. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting one. Okay, let me read this again. Variable names in intrinsic function sub syntax must contain only alphanumeric characters, underscores, periods, or colons. Okay. Hey, this is going to be fun. So I'll, t I'll show you how I'm going to do this. Uh, just because it, it's kind of difficult to troubleshoot this. I wonder, let's, let's change one thing here. Because I didn't pass this anything. So we're actually just going to grab, I don't think this is what it is, but we're going to grab the AMI, the source AMI that we want to use, right, from our from our Minecraft server. So I'm just grabbing that out of the console right now. And we're going to plunk that in here. And I'm not going to make any other changes. I, I'd be shocked if this is what the problem was. But let's go back to the browser and try to run this again and see what it does. I'm going to I'm gonna guess it's going to yell at us still. Yeah, okay. That's what, I, that's what I suspected. So go back to PyCharm. I'm going to remove this for now. All right, since we know that's not the problem. And I'm going to show you my super sophisticated troubleshooting technique. Grab all of this and do that, okay? Really easy way for us to narrow down where this error is. So let's, now that that's done, go back to the browser and upload this again. Let's see what happens. Okay, no errors. Now I'm not going to go any further. I'm just going to say cancel. Okay, so let's go back to the to pie charm and we're just going to systematically go through these steps and we'll take the comments back out. Okay, I know not the most sophisticated troubleshooting method, but uh, it works. Help us narrow it down at least. Okay, no complaints from recipe. So now let's do the same with distribution. All right, save that, go back to the browser, cancel, and create a new stack. Okay, I'm not surprised. Let's rule this out though, just validate for sure. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to PyCharm and I'm going to remove the comments from Pipeline. And, and this will definitely help us decide what the issue is here. Okay. And now we're going to choose our file one more time, builder and deploy. Oh yeah, okay, that makes sense because now we're referring to things here. Distribution, is that spelt right? I don't think that's spelt right. It's commented out, so that's not gonna help, but okay, I think it's spelled right. So we know now that it's most likely in the distribution component right here. Okay, so let's let's go through this, get rid of all the comments, and just have a look. That looks fine to me. This is pretty basic right there. I would suspect it's probably in these. Oh, there it is right there. See what I did? I didn't put the closing curly bracket. Let's see if this is what fixes the problem. Go back to browser. Okay, upload. Hey, just like that. A closing uh, cricket is missed. So now we're just gonna call this, we'll call this Minecraft Builder, okay? And you can see here, here's our empty AMI. So if I was to execute this now, it's it's going to fail, right? So I'm going to go back over here. Grab this AMI, this reference, and we're going to plunk it into here. And that should be enough. The rest of this we set default values for. So let's see what happens. Right. Good tagging practice. We know we would fill that out. Next, our summary slide and create stack. So you can see there are our three 
components, recipe, distribution, and infrastructure all getting deployed in parallel. And the depends on attribute is, is ensuring that that pipeline isn't deployed uh, until these three components are done. And we got an error. All right, let's see what we got here. Security groups is not permitted. All right, so I probably have just a, a format error here somewhere. So let's delete this. And we'll go back and have a look at, uh, that was in what? Infrastructure config, right? So go back over here, let's get rid of our search. Security, oh, groups IDs. I think it's security group ID. We just check the, conf the documentation and we're in infrastructure config. It's security group ID, security group IDs. Okay, so we've got that. And then subnet, it yelled about subnet ID. So I'm gonna check that, that's fine. And then it also said something about termination instance on failure. So let's just make sure we've got this spelt properly. And I'm gonna make this uppercase just in case. I always forget what that is. So let's, let's check that. Go back to CloudFormation. And just make sure that that is gone and we'll redeploy. Oh yeah, I need this. If this fails again, we'll, we'll make this a, a default value, but there we go. Summary, create. Man, expected Boleyn found string, number of tags expected a JSON object. So again, this is some of these, what you'll find is as you're building these out, uh, sometimes tags are created in one way and, and the format for a different services is slightly different. So I'm not gonna delete this this time. We're gonna go back here and have a look. So it's complaining about this and it's complaining about our tags. Infrastructure config. Well, in my cheater template that I created, just to make sure all of this worked, I'm just gonna do this to see, yeah, it's exactly the same. So that's fine. We've got our subnet ID that's exactly the same, so I think we're good there. I wonder if it's just the format, it must just be the format of the tags. So let's have a documentation. Okay, so let's delete this again. And as we're waiting for that to delete, we'll go back over here. And we're in the infrastructure configuration. Oh, see, it is a different format. So this is a map of a string and it wants key value pairs not ordered like this. So I'm gonna take the easy way out for the demo today uh, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna remove the tags for now. Okay. Let's see if that's all the problem was. This should be gone by now. Oh yeah, I was gonna change this, wasn't I? Forgot. Copy. Create. Let's see if we uh, if we get this one to go this time. There we go. Yeah. So the, the format of the tags is a little different, and in the documentation, it just looks like key colon value versus the way that we had it set out. I think as a an object I always forget. So there we go, that that worked. Okay, so if we go to now the image builder, there's our pipeline, poorly named, right? Because we're, um, I'm duplicating some of the naming because I've got the stack name and I called it Minecraft Builder and then I have Minecraft in the name, but you get the idea. We can change that easily enough, no big deal. If we drill down into this, we'll see all of the information that we configured. So here's our recipe, okay? 
there's the um, the unique identifier for the recipe ARN, and we're using the built-in component from Amazon, right? Just running an update. Uh, you can look at the configuration. So this is all the detail that we provided. Here's all the infrastructure information that we provided, the security group that we created, the subnets, the VPC. You can see here, if we had have configured an SNS topic for notifications, that would have been defined here, the ARN. The key pair, here's our termination set, and we left the logs undefined. So you'll see it here. If you, if you did this through the console, it'd actually leave it blank. Uh, but I, I think this still works if I remember from our, uh, from our test. And then we've got our output name. Again, we've got, you know, poor selection of names here, but it'll work. And then our two distribution configs. Okay, so our CA central config and then launch permissions here. All that's left now is to run the pipeline. Okay, so if we go back to pipelines, drill down in here, here's our pipeline that's executing. Okay, whoops. Now this does take a bit of time uh, and it's not super exciting to watch. So I think at this point, let's just wait for a couple things to happen. What we should see here relatively quickly is an instance come to life that the image builder is using to run that uh, component that we defined, right? The update OS. We'll just give it a second here. Okay, so now it's building. It's moved from pending to building. Let's refresh over here. There we go. Okay, so this is the temporary instance that was created. You can see it's got the security group that we defined it's in the VPC we defined because we associate it to a specific subnet, our private subnet. And if we look at this security group has no inbound rules, but it does have outbound rules. So anything that initiates from that EC2 instance goes out and is allowed to come back in. Okay. So that should work fine. Um, the other thing I wanted to show before we wrap up is... I want to say this was just last week. Amazon made a change and by default, you have logging information flowing into CloudWatch logs. I'm not sure if we've waited long enough for it to show up here, but what you would get, you see, this is from our test from earlier on. We, we set up a, a pipeline for Apache and this lines up with the image builder. So if you drill down into this, what you would actually see, here's our testing that we were going through to make sure that all, all this works. If you drill down, this will actually show you the output of the commands that were executed as part of the components that you associated with the builder. So uh, the output for our current test would look very similar to this because all we're doing is, is running essentially a, a yum update. Okay. So this is another option that you have for troubleshooting and it's natively there now. You, you, you can disable it, but I actually really like CloudWatch log groups, CloudWatch logs as a way to, to get some information really quickly. Let's see if it's here yet. Yeah, I don't see it. This is our other Minecraft log, so that's not there yet. But you get the idea. This does take a bit of time, okay? So folks, uh, I think we're gonna call it a day here. We've, we've essentially, walked through this. We have our source AMI, which is our Minecraft server. We've built infrastructure configurations, recipes, distribution configuration, and then tied all of those configuration items together with a pipeline. And that pipeline is executing right now. It's deployed our EC2 instance within the VPC that we've defined earlier on. And when this process is completed, we'll have a new output AMI that's been patched and that AMI will be copied to a secondary region, in our case, US East 1, right? So I think we're gonna call it an evening. Thanks very much. Uh, I hope you learned something and enjoy the rest of your week. Take care, everybody.